Hey there, Philos here. This video is going to be a general overview of the Dima Hunter for patch 2.4. I get a lot of questions like what's the best build and things like that. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to summarize what I've gathered from my testing on the PTR, as well as collecting feedback from other players. I'm also going to show each of the sets and talk about the changes for 2.4 in case you haven't been keeping up with the PTR you're completely oblivious to what's going on in patch 2.4. I'm going to kind of summarize all that for you. First, I just want to kind of talk about the good sets and what situations you're likely to use each of them in. And the most obvious is the Unhallowed for Torment speed farming. And then after that, the Shadow set for Group Crater Rifts. And then the most popular question ever, what's the best build for solo greater rifts? And this one is a little bit more tricky, it's less obvious, but what I can say is that the Marauder will be the easiest to progress solo, and that's why in my opinion it is the best for solo greater rifting. Now it's not clear that at the end of the season the rank 1 setup is going to be Marauder however I am sure that most people will find it the easiest to play and the easiest to progress into higher level greater rifts so now that that's out of the way I want to show and talk about the changes for Demon Hunter in 2.4 first thing I want to mention on this topic is the change to Vengeance and the Dawn weapon as this has become a staple for nearly all Demon Hunter builds in patch 2.4 you can see here at the bottom Vengeance now increases your damage by 40% while active and then here you can see what the Dawn does reduces the cooldown of Vengeance by up to 65% so what this means is that with very low CDR, about 35-37% to 37 CDR, you will be able to have 100% uptime on Vengeance. And it's good for the Hatred Generation, and they also added in the Dark Heart Rune here for damage reduction. So, you can go damage reduction or Hatred Generation. It's a really, really strong skill, and you get a lot of value out of this ability. Assuming you have the Dawn in the cube or equipped, Depending on the setup you're running, either way you're going to get a lot of value out of that ability. So that's kind of just, again, a staple for the Demon Hunter next patch I kind of wanted to mention before I get into the actual set bonuses. So here we have the Unhallowed set, and you can see the bonuses. They added Hatred Generation, as well as a boost to the damage and the defense, so the damage reduction, as well as they added in Vengeance on the damage increase by Discipline. That's again just adding to the value of Vengeance, especially for an Unhallowed setup. Dawn, Vengeance, you're just getting a lot of value out of that. And because of its high mobility, AoE damage potential, and the burst damage potential, this is going to be the go-to set for speed farming Torment. It also has the potential to push relatively high Greater Rift solo. Next we have the Natalia set. Not much changed for this one. You can see the bonuses here. They increase the CDR from 2 seconds to 4 seconds. They, which reduces the amount of cooldown required to maintain your standard rotation. And it also makes it easier to build around a 2 to 1 rotation. Rather than 3 to 1 being the standard, probably going to end up being 2 to 1 in the future. They also buffed the damage reduction a little bit, and no damage buff other than utilizing Vengeance, taking advantage of some other new items. This set is in kind of an awkward position as it won't really be the go-to set for anything, which I imagine most people won't really complain about since we have ran it for two seasons in a row now. But Having said that, it does still have the potential to push relatively high Greater Rift solo, and it is still definitely viable for speed farming, so if you really do enjoy the Natalia gameplay, you will still be able to play it without feeling like you're severely handicapped, but you're not going to be forced to play it. 
Next we have the Marauder. And as I mentioned earlier, this is going to kind of be the go-to set for solo greater rifting for most players. It is by far the easiest to play and the most balanced build, having very strong survivability from this new belt here. You get damage reduction per companion, and with the Marauder bonus you get all your companions, so it's really really heavy damage reduction here. It also has good sustained damage potential. Through abilities like Seeds, you're able to take advantage of 100% uptime on Seed, so you're going to get really good value. And they also redesigned the Manticore to have Cluster Arrow cost reduction, so again, that's just enabling you to do more sustained damage with this setup, along with the survivability buffs. It's a very, very solid setup to push Greater Rifts with. The bonus, as you can see, kind of glanced over that a minute ago it's basically the same as it has been just a little bit bigger numbers and they did add the companion modifier and the vengeance modifier onto that as well so again just reiterating the value of vengeance and then giving a little bit of extra value from the companions not incredibly significant but it is nice to have that little boost in damage and now we have the redesigned Shadow Mantle set. And you can see the bonuses here. You get the damage bonus from having a melee weapon equipped. Shadow Power gets all the runes. And then the infamous 40,000% weapon damage to the first enemy hit. This is why this set is going to be the go-to for group greater rifting. The single target damage potential with this setup is kind of crazy. When you're pushing Greater Rifts, the Rift Guardians and Elites take a long time to kill, and this is going to help kind of speed that up. Also, even in speed runs, depending on the group composition and the Greater Rift level, it's nice to have someone that can just literally just destroy the Rift Guardian in just a few moments. And there are some new melee weapons to complement the setup. Namely, we have the Lord Greenstone's fan, and then we also have the Corelli's point here. There's a couple other new melee weapons, but these two are going to be the main ones, and the Greenstone fan is really useful for solo greater rifting variations with the shadow set for your AoE damage. Use the fan of knives. Um, but in a group Greater Rift situation, you're really going to want to use this one, the Corellis Point, or the Hatred Sustain on the single target. As I mentioned, you're basically there to kill the Rift Guardian and Elites, and this is going to help you sustain that Hatred on the single target. And then finally, we have the Legacy of Nightmare, which is the No Set set. Um, these rings were redesigned to increase your damage when they're the only set bonus you have equipped based on simply having ancient items equipped. So this opens up the door for lots of random builds for fun as well as some hidden potential builds like the Fan and Knives Shimitsu build showed up kind of late in the PTR which I have here, kind of the foundation. I don't exactly recommend to play this because the gameplay is very questionable and it's not very fun. Um, but it does have the potential to be a good build. And other than the fan of knives here, I haven't really seen or thought of anything other than this that would work really well with the set. The Demon Hunter kind of lacking generic legendaries with good synergy to make use of the set so I don't exactly expect it to end up being very popular but you can have fun with it and we very well may see some other interesting builds pop up eventually um, that people just either haven't publicized or haven't even thought of yet so that's pretty much it. I mean, there are some new items, just like random items that do random stuff that could be useful potentially in some builds, but they're not really staples in anything. 
And there was some changes to like the multi shot, Dead Man's Legacy, the modifier on the multi shot, you get 100% damage on that, as well as the, the Bombardier's Rucksack for Marauder. You get 100%, up to 100% sentry modifier. So I mean, little tweaks like this just to kind of boost up the Demon Hunter damage potential a little bit. And yeah, there's also the Endless Walk setup. They redesigned the jewelry here, the Compass Rose Traveler Pledge combo. So you get damage bonus while you're standing still, damage reduction while you're moving. And it's kind of awkward to utilize this as a Demon Hunter because we're such a mobile class. It's really important for us to keep on our toes and kind of move around a lot. So. It's hard to really get value out of that damage, but in a group, you could potentially utilize this, especially the higher you go, the longer you're going to be in one spot, and the damage modifier is really strong, comparable to focusing restraint, and because it opens up an extra ring slot, you have other rings that you can take advantage of to make up for the difference between focus and restraint. You also have to lack the Hellfire Amulet, so you lose a passive, so I mean, it, it depends on the setup very much so as to whether or not you would want to take advantage of this. Most Demon Hunter builds are not able to really take good advantage of this, but it is there and it is good, definitely has potential to be useful, specifically in groups. The Mantle of Channeling here. This is worth mentioning. You get a damage increase and damage reduction while channeling. Because there are no Natalia shoulders, the Natalia doesn't have a shoulder, right? So these are kind of like the Natalia shoulders. Along with the Natalia belt, the Crashing Rain and the Mantle of Channeling are going to be kind of staple for Natalia builds. So yeah, that's it. I hope that kind of helps you guys get an idea. I know a lot of people are really interested in the Demon Hunter. We got the short stick last season. A lot of people didn't get to play. They didn't get their Demon Hunter fix in Season 4. And There's definitely a lot, a lot of interest in Demon Hunter for Season 5. And it's, it's looking pretty good. We got a lot of build diversity and, you know, value in a group. It's like we got a little bit of everything kind of going on. So it's looking good. Looking forward to it. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.